This is the new GH5S from Panasonic. Someone lent us this camera a while ago, and we've been giving it a really thorough test. Maybe like us, you've recently bought a GH5, and you're a little bit upset that Panasonic have come out with a new camera so soon. Or maybe you haven't bought a GH5 yet. Either way, we need to talk. And here it is, the Panasonic GH5S in our very hands. No, yeah. in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Lots, lots of rumours. <laughs> lots of rumours about this. How many websites? All over YouTube. How many forums they've been talking about the camera. We've been playing with this for a while. Yeah. And what has been fun... <laughs> <laughs> is seeing everybody else trying to guess yes. what it is. So let's start by getting a handle on what this camera is really about. I don't think this camera is a replacement for the GH5. Okay. I think it's an alternative. If you think of the GH5, the standard GH5, as a great stills camera that also shoots video, you should think of this as a video DSLR that happens to shoot stills. And I think that is a perfect summary at the start of this review about mm. what this is going to achieve for us, and we're going to illustrate that and, and, and show. It's different priorities. Yes. It's a different thing. But it's an alternative. It's not a replacement. Don't panic. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> um, at first glance, and when you handle the camera, uh, you're a GH5 owner, it's, it's the same body. It's exactly the same. None of the buttons are different. The same batteries, same connectors. It I did notice one swanky little difference to start mm -hmm. off with. It's got a beautiful red record <laughs> button and a lovely red stripe around one of the mode dials. How yeah. exciting is that? A really exciting. I'm sold. Take my money. <laughs> By being the same body, it has a lot, a lot of pluses for people that are GH5 owners. Oh, yeah, lots. The lovely little XLR module that sits on the top, um, that all works. Same batteries, same chargers. So if you've already got a GH5 cage, anything you add to this will be the same. See, that, the batteries, uh, for me, that, that, that's, mm. that's no small thing that they've, they've said, OK, you've invested your money in, in those those important elements and you're not going to have to go and buy it all over again and, uh, and hats off to them for that. There's no physical difference and it, it works the same as well with one exception but we'll come back to that. Okay. What are the two biggest complaints you've heard about the GH5? Mostly from you. Yeah. <laughs> but other people as well. Autofocus. Right. And low light. Yeah. There's loads about autofocus everywhere isn't there? But um, yes. So the interesting thing is is this any better? Well, we <laughs> we went out with the yeah. GH5 and the GH5S and we did a side-by-side -side comparison on a day that doesn't look very cold, but it was freezing. I should say, we've tried lots of different settings and we've tried recording this on numerous occasions. This is Facial Detect, GH5 on the left and GH5S on the right. I think it looks a little bit sharper. It, it does, when it's got the focus. Yeah, but we also tried the same thing using um, custom spot mode, as it were. So you can choose the area that's yeah. actually going to be focusing on. Yeah. Chemicals on this mode, it does look better. Just when you think it's got it in the bag. Oh, it's very, very strange. Why would it do that? This one is single area. So a tiny square, which is positioned on your face. And the GH5S, it's tracking. actually is tracking well there, I think. It's looking sharp. I think sharper. it's working quite well, yeah. And as we come to the end, is it going to blow it out this time? And no. This last one, we turn the custom settings, the custom speed and sensitivity settings of autofocus, we turn that off. And again, the GH5S does look a little better. It does. There's a little bit where the GH5 loses it slightly, gets it back. And then again, the GH5S towards oh. the end loses it and then finds. Well, Maybe I haven't got a face Maybe it's to your camera. Face. <laughs> your face. <laughs> um, it is a little bit better. It's not quite as good as I'd hoped. Okay, fine. So the second thing that everybody really has been hoping for and talking about low light. Low light. Low light. Blue light. How does the GH5S perform in low light? Well, 
we're not really big on charts no. and pixel peeping <laughs> no, on no. Extra Shot. We don't like doing charts. <laughs> no, but it's about the real world. We're talking a black picture here. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing here mm, at all. Rather black. Yeah. Um, but that shows you the light levels we're starting with. Yes, I mean, it was deliberately set it up that so way. It was so dark. <laughs> you didn't know where the camera was. So dark, we haven't got a picture. But as, as you go up the lower ISOs, what becomes clear quite quickly is that the GH5 yeah. is, 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 is becoming brighter quicker. Isn't that funny? Yes. A big thing about Panasonic's and this GH5S is they've got dual base ISOs. So you've got basically two amplifiers and one switches from one to the other. So you've got one doing the lower ISOs and one doing the higher right. ISOs. I think at the lower ISOs, this is darker than the standard GH5. Right, so what we need to see... It's as if that lower base ISO is running at a lower level amplification. And then when it switches, let's see what happens then. 1600 ISO is a really important ISO for me and my standard GH5, because that's as high as I'll go and I know the pictures are clean. In an emergency, I'll go to 3,200, right. but I'm starting to notice the noise at 3,200. 1,600, clean as a whistle. So that, that's a key point for me, 1,600. 32 at a push. So now we're effectively past what, what you would be comfortable with, and we can immediately see, looking at your the, the zoom in onto the color chart, at the bottom, yeah. The, the, the difference in the noise levels is, is quite quite stark it's at that point. It's starting to become apparent, isn't it? Although the GH5S still looks clean at 8,000. Yes. Still looks clean to me. Still looks clean at 10. Now, 12,800 is as much as you can get out of the GH5. 16,000. And we're still going. <laughs> 20,000. If I was to compare noise levels, 3,200 on the GH5 looks similar to 20,000 on the GH5S. And I think that is a really, really important conclusion. Well, if, <laughs> if you do the maths, it exactly. works out that this is about three, three and a half stops faster than a standard GH5. We talked about all the talk on the internet and websites and forums. People Everyone, were hoping for uh, one stop. <laughs> yeah, so uh, obviously it's subjective. Yeah. The, 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 the charts, but the way I think you set it up is, is a really nice comparison. That I, w I agree with you. We're looking at three and a half stops, so... That's amazing. Yeah. That is even more amazing coming out of a smaller sensor. Because we've always been taught that the bigger the sensor, the more light sensitive it is. The bigger the light buckets that collect the light. So to do that out of a micro four-third sensor, fantastic. Very, very, very clever. Now, how far will it go and stay clean? Night vision. <laughs> 32,000. Yeah, 40,000, bit noisy. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we're just letting the ISO go up on the picture. Yeah. Um, and we're not racking down the, the iris. So yes, it, it, this is a demonstration, really, of, of how far <laughs> should you wish that you could go. We're getting into numbers that you would, that, that, Oh, oh, it's just, oh, it's, oh, it's crazy. ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, this frame here, you can see the iris is racked. Right, that's the maximum ISO out of the GH5S. And yes, it's noisy, but remember, we started with a completely black picture. <laughs> that's um, seen in the dark. That is amazing performance. Amazing performance out of it. Obviously, to, to an edge that, you know, everyday use... Yeah, I but, mean, but, but it, you it don't shows... operate a camera just by winding the ISO up. Um, oh. We've got a better example of what it does in low light later yes. on. And we've got some nice pictures that, that are properly, properly done. <laughs> shot for that. Um, but it's a good example of the noise levels you can get. Um, and that amazing performance has to come at a price. Everything comes at a price, Paul. <laughs> Normally, you get better low light performance by making the sensor bigger. Um, on this camera, to get that low light performance, okay. you've got bigger pixels. Um, so that's the cost. So it's lower resolution than the GH5. Now again, we don't normally do charts. <laughs> we don't <laughs> normally do charts, but here they are. <laughs> Here's some more charts. Um, <laughs> you have to compare the resolution when you're shooting video. So this is just comparing uh, 4K 
I, I'm not going to see that with my eye at, at No. I think if you were shooting stills and blowing them up, you would notice the difference. But for making movies, nah. I actually like the GH5S. I think the GH5S looks better at yeah. HD <laughs> than the GH5. So maybe there's something about the way it downsamples from the sensor, maybe the maths works out better. We also shot some stuff, well you shot some high frame rates in HD. Mm. So the camera will do... 240 frames per second in full HD. I have to say, I do think these pictures look stunning. So big up to you for these images as well. 240 frames at full HD. This camera does HD beautifully. Really, really lovely. Although, um, I did make a mistake. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> at, at 240 frames a second, you can only shoot 8-bit. Understood. It, it's not 10-bit. Um, and I shot 8-bit log which is never a great idea. So when you put the LUT in, in the edit, you can see a little bit of color fringing, but that's my error. If I shot on a standard or a cine profile, this looks gorgeous. It looks really lovely. It looks pretty stunning anyway. The, you'd, be, you'd be really, really pleased to come, come away with these shots. Yeah, the lesson I learned is, is don't do log at 8-bit. Great slow mo though. If only I'd focused on the foreground wave there. No, it's a, it's a deliberate it's a deliberate pull for Shall the graphic. I call it art <laughs> for the graphic <laughs> to come in. So talking of vlog, um, another really big advantage with the GH5S, you get vlog as standard. So right. it's not an option. You get it whether you like it or not, and it's really good. It is good. And so you're getting, as part of the price of this camera, effectively about 90 yeah, about 90 pounds, pounds sterling. Yeah. Colour, colour matching. Mm -hmm. We did another chart. <laughs> We're getting good at charts. I thought we charts. didn't do charts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the same. It looks the same. They've done a really nice job of matching two different sensors. There's something else that's included on here, which I think is really, really useful. And again, again, ticks that box of being a, a movie maker's DSLR, mm -hmm. is time code, time code in. Really clever. Very clever. Nothing, not that I've seen before on a DSLR. Are you looking for it under there? Yeah. It's not under there. Which, where is it then? We've just stolen <laughs> it. <laughs> the time code, which is a genuine BNC time code output. Yes. Actually comes out of the flash socket. Oh, it does, it does. So. <laughs> So a little, a little bit fiddly to get to. Yeah, you're going to lose that black cap. You're going to lose the black cap. But it, it do, obviously comes with the dedicated cable that then yep. has the full-size BNC at the other end. Yep. Well, that's great. I think that's a really, really, really useful addition. <laughs> There's a problem. It forgets the time code, or it drops nine frames every time the camera goes to sleep, or if you turn the camera off. Uh, okay, right. So you sync... You sync to your other camera. You sync to your mixer or your second camera, whatever you want to sync to, but you want to set it so that the camera doesn't go to sleep and you don't turn the camera off <laughs> because every time it does, you lose nine frames. Um, I don't know if that can be tweaked. I don't know if that's a technical thing. So, so if you were shooting off battery and you've done one interview, you're going to do another interview. You, Each time you change you the battery, you need, need to, to re-sync your time code to whatever's doing you it. You so, it with this hand, <laughs> take it away with the other. We need some real-world shots. Some real-world footage. Luckily, mm. we have some. On the beach again. <laughs> On the beach again. And I think this is an interesting illustration of what noise does to a picture. Mm. Because the GH5 is potentially looking a bit brighter if you look at the actual pier, the concrete <laughs> legs, but it's not the exposure. This, this still looks like a usable picture at 25,600 to me. Um, even 32,000 and it's still... Uh, as a night shot, you would expect to, to see something. Obviously we've gone, we've gone further we've gone ahead. Way beyond. And Look at the pebbles on the beach. They're that's, casting shadows. <laughs> Obviously, we had to go and shoot something that we would make that, that's a real-world example of using this camera. Yeah. And we, we, 
did we we set out to shoot a movie? Oh, <laughs> I really hate it. And, the, and there's a lot of vloggers out there. There's a lot of sure. reviewers out there who say, oh, I've made a movie. I've made a this. movie. You haven't made a movie. <laughs> You've just strung a few shots together. So we've put some shots together to try and to try and demonstrate what this is like in low light. So what we set out to do here was start to shoot something at around dusk and follow the sequence as it got darker and darker. But we approached this as we would make a program for someone. This isn't just random shots. We, we approached it as program makers. Yeah. Can the camera deliver the, the range of shots we wanted? Without any lights. No, not a single light. It's going dark quickly. There, there is a fundamental problem with trying to demonstrate a camera that's great in low light. And that is nothing looks dark. <laughs> it really doesn't. It looks like a grey day. Um, it's hard to, to persuade people how, how, how dark. dark this is. And you, you get a sense of dusk here. You can see the, the lights falling. Yep. And, and, but the, 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 the detail in the picture and, and the range of exposures in the picture, I, I'm really, really impressed with. He's under with, a canopy here and we're, getting, we're starting to get really dark, but these are still looking good. Can't work out what he's making. He's like making a pencil. <laughs> it's survival. We're surviving. And that now that's getting seriously dark. Again, making fire. <laughs> he could hardly see what he was doing no. to, to to get that that fire going. Didn't we lose the tripod at this point? <laughs> we couldn't find it without a torch. <laughs> the pit. Um, I'm really impressed and pleased with the pictures. Here. I think what's it. It's not just the low light ability which is really impressive here, it's the way it handles the highlights. The hi it's just as important in a camera that's really sensitive that it doesn't blow out every highlight you have in it. And you notice that with the pier, you notice it here with the flames. There's still some detail in the highlights, even though you're seeing in the dark. I mean, the fire was the only light we had, and you can see as he, as he throws some more wood on here. How it lifts his face. Yeah. We're it's, talking it's, about the brightness of the flames, and that's that's a usable picture. It's, oh, it's definitely a usable picture. Absolutely, in terms of storytelling, I, I think I think those pictures are gorgeous. And uh, what, the wider shot of him sat there, we could not see him with our naked eye. Okay, so we've established we've kind of answered the question hopefully this review has, that everyone's been asking and, and thinking about is, we reckon about three and a half stops you're gonna get for this That's over a huge the GH5. plus. That's a huge plus. Yep. It's gonna color match a GH5. Yep. It looks great in HD. The, the, and the slow-mo, slow 240 brilliant. frames that you shot of those surfaces, I thought yep. looked really, really beautiful. The V-Log's a big plus. It comes as standard. Time it's, code is a big plus. I think it's it's really important, and fingers crossed, firmware. Maybe they'll maybe they'll have a look at that. So, as you beautifully explained earlier on, do things do come at a price? Yep. Now, I think there's one thing that you're disappointed with. We've left it right at the end <laughs> to tell you that there's a big thing missing from this camera that the GH5 has: in-body stabilization. Um, they tell us that they can't fit it because the sensor is physically bigger and there isn't the room to let it move around. So there's no in-body stabilization. If that had been in here, would we have had the perfect camera? Uh, we're back to the perfect camera debate. Yeah. Would you now sell your GH5 and buy a GH5S? I think as a program maker, not a movie maker, a program maker, <laughs> Possibly yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I think the the low light capabilities comes with the vlog. I think for me may, may tip it. This is much more for movie makers, isn't it? So my question to you is: yeah. Would you sell your GH5 in order to get a GH5S? No. 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 I'm greedy. I want both. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, fair enough. I want the low light ability of this camera. I really like this camera. I think it's a, it's going to be a classic. It's really good. Um, what they've done 
on, on this is incredible in something this small. But I also want image stabilization. And there are times when I want high resolution as well. The 6K chip is a nice chip in the GH5. So in short, I want both. It doesn't replace it. It's an alternative.